So, we are discussing molecular basis of inheritance and the specific topic that I am going to discuss in today's video would be this 6.8, this is 6.8 regulation of gene expression. So, this is what will be the focus of our discussion in this particular video. So, first and foremost let us understand that what exactly is gene expression, what are we trying to regulate. So, can you, can you see the topic, the topic is regulation of gene expression that means you are regulating this thing and therefore we must first understand that what, what is actually gene expression. Gene expression is something that we have done till now. So, all the previous videos they were actually explaining how the genes they ex express themselves. So, what I am trying to say is that we did that on the template of DNA you made a messenger RNA. So, this is what we did and we said that this process is called as transcription. This process is called as transcription. So, there is a gene what is called as a structural gene that gene contains the code for a polypeptide, it is located on DNA and we have made a copy of that particular code and hence we are calling it as transcription. Later on we saw that the code now that is present on the messenger RNA is converted into a language of amino acids leading to the synthesis of protein and because a uh, language of nucleotide has been changed into a language of amino acid, we actually called this particular step as translation and we will say that this is the expression of the gene. This is what the gene expresses itself into, this is what it is supposed to mean. And let me make a very important clarification here, we are talking of the elementary elementary definition of gene where we say that a beginner for a beginner the definition of gene would be that it contains the code for a protein or a polypeptide. So, protein or a polypeptide. So, this segment of DNA which contains enough code to code for this particular thing is called as a gene that is the beginner's definition. Throughout the videos we have actually seen the nuances out of it. We know that there will be some genes that will be making some other RNA say for example, R RNA genes and this R RNA gene will, this will be making ribosomal RNA and the ribosomal RNA will be a structural component of the protein synthesizing machinery which is the ribosome, but it will not be translated into protein. Similarly, there will be genes for transfer RNA as well. So, these, these genes will be the transcript would be transfer RNA and again the transfer RNA is not translated, it is only the messenger RNA that gets translated into the protein. So, we actually know that it is not necessary that the gene will be actually expressed always into a protein, it may make some other RNAs and if you remember your NCRT well, some regulatory sequences say for example, promoter they are also loosely defined as gene though they do not code for any RNA or protein, this is a line of your NCRT. So, uh, let us be absolutely clear that when we are trying to regulate the gene expression, we are talking initially at for the students of class 12th that how this thing will be regulated. Say for example, there is a gene in, uh, in your human cells, in human cells that codes for insulin. Now, this insulin is a protein. So, if insulin is a protein, therefore, there must be a gene for it and the gene will be present in all the body cells, but will be able to express itself in beta cells of islets of Langer and so pancreas. This is what I told you in my initial, initial uh, chapters that, uh, that, that what actually differentiation means. So, that means the gene is located in neuron as well and in pancreas, pancreatic cell as well, but it is uh, getting expressed in pancreas. But not in neurons. So, I will advise you that whenever you are studying uh, genetics in class 12th, please go through the videos that we recorded for cell biology, especially the biomolecules and cell division. 
actually cell division is of paramount importance before beginning the study of genetics you must revisit that particular video again and again and then you will be able to correlate a chapter of class 11th and a chapter of class 12th actually the two chapters biomolecules and uh, cell cycle and cell division will become the foundations of of genetics uh, topics like genetics i hope this is absolutely clear now again coming to my example which i was giving you about protein which is insulin now you know insulin lowers blood glucose level in human beings so when will you require to actually lower the blood glucose le level obviously the answer is when it becomes higher than the normal value and in a normal person when this higher value is expected uh, the obvious answer again would be that when this person consumes food so that means what i am trying to say when you eat food the food is digested in your alimentary canal the end products of the carbohydrate uh, digestion which is mostly glucose is absorbed in the intestine and it goes into the blood and the blood glucose level raises and then the body secretes insulin and insulin transports the blood glucose into the body cell thereby thereby lowering the level of uh, glucose in your blood this is how it actually lowers the blood glucose level so this is now very straightforward now suppose you take a meal at 8 am and then you take a small meal at 11 am then a heavy meal say for example at 2 pm then a small snack at 5 pm and then finally a good amount of food in your dinner at 9 9 pm so that means i have said that these are the five times that the blood glucose will increase now which means that this is the time that you need to synthesize insulin therefore the gene which is active in beta cells of islets of langerhans of pancreas will will be transcribed into the messenger rna that messenger rna that would be initially a pre mrna will be will be spliced to form the final mrna that will be translated into the insulin protein this is very very important to understand so now what we are saying that sometimes you need to make insulin sometimes you don't need to make insulin which means that you know that how the gene of insulin is getting expressed you already know about gene expression this time our gene expression is that insulin pro insulin protein that has been synthesized because of this particular gene so we know how it gets expressed but now my problem is that i want to make it sometimes do not want to make it other times so that means i am regulating the gene expression and depending upon the amount of the food intake the level of the insulin will also be different sometimes it should be more sometimes it should be secreted in less amounts so now we are understanding what exactly is regulation of gene expression so that means we already know what is gene expression now the idea is whether i will allow the gene to express sometimes other times not allow it to express and if at all it is expressing then what will be the magnitude of the expression sometimes the product required may be in more quantity sometimes it may be in less quantity this is how this is what the topic is all about this is what is called as regulation of gene expression now let us see what happens here so if you want that the protein should not be formed if you want that this protein should not be formed the most logical step is to stop the transcription so this is the most logical step so that means you will like to regulate you will like to regulate gene expression at the level of transcription because it does not make much of a sense that you allow transcription you let there be splicing say for example the formation of the final messenger rna and then do something to stop it because this will be a wastage this will be a wastage of resources as well as energy so that is not prudent so that means it makes sense that if i want to regulate the gene expression it should be at the level of transcription and even at the level of transcription i would like that the gene expression should actually be regulated more precisely at the level of initiation of transcription so this is where actually i want to regulate gene expression i do not want my gene to be expressed so i should stop initiation of transcription logically 
indeed in prokaryotes this is the step where almost all gene expression is exclusively regulated so that means in prokaryotes this is the this is probably the exclusive method we can say for class 10 12 student to regulate the level of the, the gene expression in, in their cells. But this would be the major mechanisms in eukaryotes as well. Now let us focus what exactly is initiation of transcription. So I told you that initiation of transcription will be binding of RNA polymerase to a region that was upstream and 5 prime of the structural gene which is called as promoter. So this binding identification of the promoter and then binding to the binding to the site is called as the initiation of transcription. You very well know that you will require some initiation factors for that. So that means I, I hope that you have read the transcription part and you have seen the videos many times and you are comfortable with what I am telling here. So that means I will not allow say for example the RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter even if it binds I will not allow it to move along the template. So that means the RNA polymerase not identifies the does not identify the structural gene it actually identifies the promoter binds to it and then moves along the template reads it and transcribe it so i am either stopping it from binding and if at all the binding occurs i am not allowing it to move along the transcription unit so that it will not be able to read the transcription unit and will not be able to transcribe it so this is this is what we are saying that in prokaryotes this is what we will be studying and but this will be a major mechanism of regulation of gene expression in eukaryotes as well. So let us look something else. Uh, uh, what, what else can happen in eukaryotes say for example. So in eukaryotes there will be other mechanisms as well which means that initially, initially I am trying to stop this is the DNA molecule. I am trying to stop the transcript being formed. I do not want that this transcript should be formed. This is my initial endeavor. I want to regulate the process here. But in case I am unable to stop it even then, even then I can do something with the pre-mRNA. Say for example it is not allowed to splice or it is not allowed to go to the cytoplasm through the nuclear pore. So I am interfering with the transfer of the mRNA that actually got transcribed. I failed to stop the transcription. Now I can do something here. I can destroy it. If that is not possible, I will interfere with the transport of this messenger RNA into the cytoplasm because I very well know that actually the synthesis of the protein will be will be the function of ribosomes and these ribosomes will be the in the present in the cytosol. So this is so anything anything that can interfere with the formation of protein can be used as regulation of gene expression. Even in prokaryotes there is an another thin, thing available. Suppose this messenger RNA could not be stopped then it can be destroyed in cytoplasm with the help of double stranded RNA watch my words what i am saying i can actually i can actually destroy or stop this messenger rna from being translated with the help of double stranded rna you will study about this particular concept in your biotechnology uh, chapter where there they will be teaching you how to make pest resistant plant and there would be a phenomena of rna interference that has been described there and even if something goes wrong I can interfere with the process of translation and I can go to the extent that even if the protein is formed you can do some post translational modification you can cut the protein. This is normally in the cases of the pathogen this is the pathogen of the messenger RNA actually that I am talking about when I am talking about RNA interference this will be a very important mechanism of cellular defense available in all eukaryotic cell. 
my idea is that the gene should not be expressed into the protein so i am trying to stop at uh, it at 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 various level my ideal would be to stop the transcription per se i hope this is absolutely clear so i will read out something from your ncrt right now so we will look at the ncrt textbook i hope you all have your ncrt textbook whenever you are watching the video please keep the ncrt textbooks at hand so this is what your ncrt is saying so the ncrt is saying that regulation of gene expression will be occurring at transcription level which is formation of primary transcript this is what we are saying is desirable then they say processing level regulation of splicing transport of messenger rna from nucleus to the cytoplasm we talked about this <coughs> and the translation level so these are the four levels that are actually given in your ncrt so this is what i have i have in general told you about so this is how the gene expression can be regulated we want this protein to not to be formed say for example because it is not required and in some cases actually the pathogen messenger rna may be getting translated which will be detrimental to the health of the cell and hence to the health of the organism of which this cell is a part of i hope this is absolutely clear that what exactly is actually meant by regulation of gene expression now we will focus our attention on our syllabus that means we have to study clearly the regulation of gene expression in prokaryotes and in the next video we will have a general idea that how what are the problems faced by the eukaryote uh, by a prokaryotic cell remember it is a simple unicellular organism and then you can scale up your imagination for eukaryotes what will be the problems of eukaryotic organism with a organism like human being which is having 50 trillion plus cell